Hey guys, my name is Leonard and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about wallets. In total, around 3 billion of crypto assets were stolen in 2020. This kind of theft can happen for many reasons, and the biggest one is coming from users themselves. When it comes to using a proper email address, set up a strong password or enabling the 2 fa authentication, these elements sometimes lead to weakness and thus a walkable bridge for hackers. Choosing the most suitable security to your needs is the key to protect yourself from attacks. Encrypted wallets may be the solution. There are two big families of wallets. We usually call them hot wallets and cold wallets. Hot wallets are always connected and they are made for on-the-go transactions. Cold wallets can store your cryptocurrencies offline. Each of them has its advantages and drawbacks and we are here to see which suits you the best. We will explain in another video how a wallet works. So how do I define the security level of a wallet? Before choosing which type of digital ledger suits your needs, let's begin with what defines its security. First of all, you've got the email address and the password and the recovery ability in case there are lost, the 2 face setup if it's possible, the private key, custodial or non-custodial. A private key is called non-custodial when you are the sole owner of it and thus to retrieve your funds. A custodial is a private key that is stored by a third party server. And lastly, you have the recovery set phrase. So now let's dive into the hot wallets. As we said before, these are made for on-the-go transactions and uh, they are solely online. The first kind of wallet you may encounter is the exchange wallets. The first thing you do when discovering cryptocurrencies is to set up an account on an exchange platform. And when doing so, you can leave them there. But this practice represents two issues. Firstly, and referring to user issues, you can be hacked. And secondly, the platform can be hacked. The second part cannot be resolved on your side and you must choose a platform that has already proven its resilience and trust given by its community. The first issue, however, can be improved drastically by changing your email address from person1 to a dedicated one with no relation whatsoever to your personal information. Also, you can change your password from a simple one with only letters to a stronger one with letters, numbers and uh, special characters. And lastly, you can also change from a 2FA generated by SMS from an auto-generated to a like Google Authenticator. So now, what are the pros and cons of leaving your cryptocurrencies on an exchange? Well, as you can see on the board, um, you can access and manage multiple currencies, but also trade and make on-the-go transactions. In exchange, the only thing you have to do is to set up an account, which means email address, passwords, and ID verification. It's kind of a nice trade, if you may. On the drawback side, um, the thing is that you don't manage your address. Your private keys are non-custodial, which means to, you won't access them freely. And if the exchange platform gets hacked or worse, decides to run with your money, you might not be able to retrieve your funds. Now that we've seen exchange wallets, let's take a look into web wallets. Web wallets are wallets available on the web. Mostly free, easily accessible as long as you have an internet connection. You can either have a website wallet that will only be manageable from the website, like my Ether wallet, or browser extensions like the Brave Wallet or Metamask. Since you will be storing your cryptocurrencies online, you might be less protected and be the target of phishing scams. So now let's talk about desktop wallets and mobile wallets. Uh, desktop wallets and mobile wallets are basically the same, allowing you to store cryptocurrencies, to transfer cryptocurrencies, and even some have uh, integrated trading platform. But the difference lies in the portability. Of course, if you have a desktop, it will be harder to uh, travel with it or to keep your cryptocurrencies at hand. But the portability of the mobile wallet is also its risk because if uh, you store all your cryptocurrencies into your phone, uh, there might be a risk of loss and to never retrieve your funds. So what are the pros and cons of mobile and desktop wallets? Well, first of all, you can access and manage multiple currencies as exchange wallets. You have integrated trading platforms for some and you have also, for, for a few of them, you have uh, features similar to hard, uh, hard drive wallets, like signing off transaction with a USB key. Lastly, your private key is non-custodial, which means that you are the sole owner of it and you can manage and access your funds uh, directly and privately. Regarding drawbacks of desktop and mobile wallets, um, First of all, it's more complicated than a, a hardware wallet because interfaces are often old or uh, difficult to grasp for beginners. On top of this, there's the lack of portability for the desktop wallets. And lastly, these wallets are not as secure as hardware wallets because a phone and a computer can be hacked. So now there's the last part in online wallets, a more complex one, 
Um, it's about smart contract wallets. Smart contract wallets are usually built on the blockchain. And due to their specific nature, they have unique abilities. Among them, you can find the 3FA authentication, the social recovery, which is the recovery of your seed phrase through third parties, friends, family maybe, rate-limited withdrawals, personal whitelist and blacklist, fraud alerts, and most of all, emergency lockdown if you get hacked. Most of these features are encoded through an open source code, and this kind of wallet might be complex for beginners to handle. We will explain in, other, in another video how these wallets work. Now that we've seen that smart contacts wallets have its unique abilities, it comes also with its own advantages and drawbacks. First of all, in the advantages, you can find all the features we've talked about before, like the social recovery, the whitelist and the blacklist, fraud alerts, emergency lockdown, but most of all, the fact that it's non-custodial, which means that you have free access to your own account. On the other side, on the drawbacks, um, smart contract wallets are often difficult for beginners because they, it's really hard to understand how does it work. And many exchange does not support crypt cryptocurrency sent from a smart contract wallet. Also, generally speaking, a smart contract wallets only supports one blockchain. Now we've seen all the hot wallets and most of the advantages and drawbacks are the fact that you can make on-the-go transactions and uh, your funds are immediately retrievable as you have an internet connection. And on the other side, it's of course uh, easy to hack or maybe easy to get scammed. Now that we talk about hot, hot wallets, let's dive into the cold wallets. Cold wallets, contrary to hot wallets, store a user's public address and private key offline. They are not connected to the internet and through the software or encrypted key, they allow them to manage their cryptocurrencies without risking the loss of the funds or private keys. So now let's dive into the cold wallets. The first one, and maybe the most famous, is hardware wallets. Hardware wallets are USB drive storing securely your private keys. The difference with hot wallets is that they can't be affected by a virus coming from your computer. Generally speaking, companies are working hand-in-hand -hand with their communities to provide the best safety for their tools. What are the pros and cons of hardware wallets? Well, in the first part, you can access and manage multiple currencies at the same time. You also have integrated training platform for some. You have also your own recovery set phrase in case you lose your email and password. And uh, all the private keys are non-custodial, which means that the device stores your private keys in, in it. And lastly, and uh, most of all, they are disconnected from the web with no risk of phishing, scamming, or anything related to web attacks. On the drawback side, companies server storing your personal information, like your email address, your password, and even your physical address, can be hacked. Also, transferring and managing your crypto may take more time than if you had like a, an exchange uh, wallet. And lastly, uh, some uh, hardware wallets are more complex than, let's say, a mobile wallet or a platform wallet. The second core wallet, and the most secure of all, is the paper wallet. You can generate it off certain websites and later print it out on a piece of paper. You can choose to laminate your piece of paper, engrave it on a piece of metal. It's up to you. So in terms of advantages, paper wallets are non-custodial, of course. They have no online risk and all the interaction you have between you and your blockchain is direct. In terms of drawbacks, uh, Paper wallets can only, of course, manage one cryptocurrency at a time. Uh, there's an offline risk also, like paper can burn or be lost. And transferring and managing your crypto may take more time because it's a bit more complex, a bit more archaic to manage your crypto on a paper wallet. To conclude this video, a wallet is the combination between the offline or online risk and it is of use. Old school guy would tell you that nothing beats a paper wallet, while hipsters will argue over which hardware wallet is the best. Overall, you now have all the pros and cons to make an informed choice. Good luck! If you like this video, you can hit the like button, and if you want more content about cryptocurrencies, you can subscribe to our channel. See you in the next time!